Thank you very, very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say how happy I am to be here with you this morning in this very warm and welcoming group. I trust that the seminar or the forum that began yesterday went off to a good start and that you all had an interesting interaction and exchange and that your many questions were answered. Today, in, within the framework of nation branding, I'll speak a little bit about Jamaica. I'm not sure if I will follow to the T what Mr. Donfried has pointed out, but um, in the overall presentation, I am sure that um, you all will get an idea of what Brand Jamaica is all about and what we are doing to have a sustainable brand and to protect that brand. And afterwards, I'll, I'm willing to answer any questions that you may have. I realize that the time is very short, so I will just go right into my presentation. We are all aware that the notion of place and nation branding has become somewhat of a buzzword these days, following the popularization of the term by the father of place branding, Sir Simon Anholt, in the mid-1990s. Since then, many experts have come up with their own interpretation of the concept and its benefits. Choose any defi definition you like, but one thing is certain. We have all grown to realize that brand building is not instant. It is a long process, which will vary depending on the sector being branded and the objectives to be met. As such, national priorities will undoubtedly guide the development of branding efforts, depending on the image to the outside world that said country wishes to communicate. Results may not be immediate and could require a good amount of financial outlay and exposure before reaping the anticipated rewards. Peter Van Ham also refers to this new phenomenon, a trend from nation building to nation branding, and the rise of what he calls the brand state. As such, he said smart states are building their brands around reputations and attitudes in the same way that smart companies do. Close quotation. Globalization is putting pressure on states to develop, manage, and leverage their image. Besides, as integration creates greater homogenization, states need to craft distinct images to stand out in a competitive crowd. A positive and clear image of a country can help generate the first signs of interest that a powerful country will have, for example, in a developing country. It can dictate how these countries will interact and the various types of partnerships they will forge. At the economic level, creating a brand can represent the benchmark of a country's economic abilities and competitiveness, creating an image conducive to close business relations. This can facilitate trading concessions and incentives, as well as greater flows of investment, which in turn can stimulate a country's national economy, creating jobs and increasing wealth, with consequent increases in government revenue. A politically stable country with strong democratic values is another feature that will add greater value to the brand and speaks to the importance that sound governance plays in country branding. Nation branding is interwoven with history and culture, what the country represents, what it has to offer. Culture is therefore a strong medium through which to promote nation branding as it is emotionally powerful. According to the experts, the roles and tasks involved in nation branding can be summarized as follows. Crafting a nation's identity and developing a competitive strategy. Nation branding is synonymous with identity and each country must develop its own strategy based on its own peculiarities and special attributes and customized to its own circumstance. As such, Brand Jamaica is a composite of many elements, all special and unique to the island called Jamaica and which over the years has become so potent internationally that many are of the view that Jamaica has become a brand in itself. Born out by the distinguishable colors of its flag, 
the only one of two countries in the world that neither has red, white, or blue in its color combination. From its Blue Mountain coffee, to the fa famous jerk seasoning in its cuisine, to the reggae boys soccer team and its lightning bolt athletes, Jamaica has been successful in putting itself on the world map, as we like to say in local Jamaican parlance. In 2007, Simon Anholt, in referring to the island's brand strength, stated, there are a number of other countries out there whose natural national identity is so well worth protecting, even if their brand image isn't quite as perfect as Switzerland's. Jamaica is a prime example. The sounds of reggae, the colors of Rasta, and all the rest of that extraordinary country's national identity have been loved, admired, and recognized around the world." Close quote. At the center of the brand, we find Jamaicans, and so Brand Jamaica is synonymous with unleashing the potential of the Jamaican people. There is no doubt that the most treasured resources of a country are its people, and this is what has been placed at the center of Brand Jamaica. As our tourism minister so aptly puts it, Jamaica has given the world many things, but the most wonderful has been the people of Jamaica. And it is therefore not surprising that one of our greatest catchphrases is the bold energy of our people building on our creativity, indomitable spirit to achieve, resilience, innovation, and hard work. The second task I'd like to highlight is supporting the creation of the reality that leverages the strategy. In February 2007, Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, launched its Brand Jamaica program aimed at repositioning Jamaica as a premier trade and investment destination, complementing it already, com complementing its already well-established attributes as a tourist paradise. The strategic intention was to convince the traveler that both sides of the Jamaican experience are essential in creating the necessary balance between business and pleasure. As such, Jampro's tagline, the place you have always wanted to visit is the place you want to do business, was an aggressive strategy highlighting our stable democracy and enabling business environment the offer of the talent and quality of our people for the life of one's investment in Jamaica. Underlying this decision was the recognition that a strong national brand could give a tiny island of 2.7 million people, a mere dot on the world map, a competitive edge in the global marketplace by helping them to transform the economy to operate in a dynamic international environment. This was a means of sending a clear signal to the world that we are more than a beach. We are a people. We are a country. To use the words of one of our past tourism taglines, as a reflection of life as it exists on the island, the warmth of the Jamaican people, its industries, its creativity, its cultural diversity, to name a few of the elements that embodies the country in its totality. In the branding process, Jampro mobilized the country in setting its own reputation agenda, noting that it is virtually impossible for small states to compete without one, meaning a reputation agenda, which means that they have to be more creative and enduring in what they do to get the world's attention. Within this framework, Jamaicans themselves should first define their identity and then decide how they wanted the world to perceive them. Having achieved self-determination and definition as a nation, they should then vigorously promote and project the positive, enduring perception of themselves to the world in all they do, noting that the real essence of being truly Jamaican is how citizens live and relate and do business internally and relate with the rest of the world. Thus the phrase, Jamaica to the world, 
was born. Usain Bolt demonstrates this very well with his signature pose on the track. He's presenting Jamaica to the world. Jampro pointed out that what would give Jamaica a boost in the market was differentiation and distinctiveness, coupled with the ability to be world-class in production and service delivery. The Jamaica business brand thus marketed Jamaica as a preferred trade and investment location, which involved general sensitization in various target markets with a deliberate attempt to move towards breaking new ground further away from traditional markets. Several areas were targeted for promoting the business, the business brand architecture. Tourism is an area, of course, in which we have a competitive advantage, and this morning I did not plan to spend much time on tourism because I think you are all very familiar with it. What Jampro has been trying to do is to ensure that uh, because, as you're all aware, in nation branding, you have to be careful that there is a balance, that you do not um, promote one element of your brand to the detriment of the other. So our challenge has been in ensuring that people do recognize Jamaica not only as a beach, as I said before, we're more than a beach, that Jamaica is serious about business, trade, and investment, and that many things are happening in Jamaica which the world needs to hear and the world needs to know about because for a small country our size, um, I believe that we have made a phenomenal impact on the world, but we still have um, quite a lot to do. We have challenges with which we have to confront and find a way how to sort those problems out, sort out those problems. Okay, I would go to the third, I think, um, task. Identifying and leveraging symbolic events, people and places to communicate country identity and national orientation. Sports is a platform that Jamaica has repeatedly used to promote brand Jamaica. When Jamaica gained its biggest medal tally ever in world athletics, seven gold, four silver, and two bronze medals, coming second overall at last year's IAAF championships held in Berlin, it provided an opportunity to convert the national medal hall into gold for the country. The impact of the team's performance, at the nucleus of which was the world record-breaking performance of Usain Bolt, provided an unquantifiable amount of positive publicity for Jamaica across the globe and has made the dream of seriously developing sports tourism as an added dimension of, gener of the general tourism um, product. Um, one of the things I would like to, to draw attention to here is that as a brand, you have to be constantly rebranding yourself, constantly um, developing. Although Jamaica is well noted for um, its tour tourism offerings, sports tourism is relatively new. And so this is another niche that we're trying to tap. And um, with the performance of our athletes and with the structured program that we have in Jamaica to, to um, sustain um, this dimension um, in our tourism product, we hope that we will be able, not only in athletics, but in golf and football and in several other sporting areas. When, as a tropical country, Jamaica entered a bobsled team at the Winter Olympics several years ago and further outperformed some countries with temperate climate and snow, the team also became a brand and gave rise to the movie Cool Runnings. And recently, a formed, and recently, we have a new tourist attraction in Jamaica, capitalizing on the popularity of the team. Last year, for the first time, Jamaica participated in the Winter Olympics in skiing, and although the country did not medal, our participants performed well, attracting much public attention. This year, we were also represented at Wimbledon, 
Jamaica's Sunshine Girls are number two in the world in netball, and we could go on and on. So sports for us is definitely a platform on which we can capitalize to market brand Jamaica and to give it more prominence um, in the world. Jamaica's music industry has vast foreign exchange and employment creating potential and has been a major driver of the brand Jamaica um, campaign. Of course, the, mu the popularization of the music being initiated by Bob Marley. Most places you go in the world today and identify yourself as a Jamaican, the link is immediately made with Bob Marley and reggae. The music has had such a phenomenal development that imagine this. Let us take an imaginary journey. Close your eyes and picture for a few seconds, and I quote, a backdrop of unfurling mountain ranges, towering peaks and lush vegetation. 60,000 revelers sway in unison to Jamaica's reggae music, enchanted by the warm, friendly atmosphere. The voice of Bob Marley fills the air with a haunting melody, and the mass of people meditate on every thought-provoking line. Around them are vendors selling Jamaican cultural products, jerk chicken, red striped beer, condiments, and an arrange of memorabilia that effortlessly sums up life in the Caribbean. Where are we? Bet you thought you were in Jamaica. No, it was in fact Udine in northern Italy at Rotterdam's splash at one of the biggest reggae festivals in Europe. Just one example of trade in culture and the strength of brand Jamaica. This was taken uh, from a speech by our Minister of Culture, Babsy Grange, Honorable Babsy Grange, when she went to Italy. And she was so overwhelmed by the potency of brand Jamaica um, in Italy that um, it, 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 it was quite emotional for her. She could close her eyes and picture herself being in Jamaica. So we continue to use various events to market the country, culturally, historically, and otherwise, and we are glad when others do the promotion for us. The next task, providing clear, believable, and positive communication of what the country really is, what it stands for, and where it is going. A few years ago, the Jamaican government launched the national program Vision 2030, Jamaica, the place to live, to work, to raise a family, a project destined to render Jamaica a developed, to render Jamaica developed country status by the year 2030. You may say a very ambitious project, but we consider it important to set goals and work towards them, and we believe that we can make signposts along our journey, which will eventually take us there. This ties in with the stimulating national self-consciousness, promoting patriotism, harmony, a sense of pride to enhance national mobilization. This is important because if the people do not feel Jamaica, they can't communicate Jamaica, and so it begins with them. Many of the companies establishing businesses in Jamaica and even tourists visiting Jamaica. What they have said to us um, repeatedly, what attracts them to Jamaica? The people. You can go anywhere and have the sun and have the beach, but the people, the warmth of the people and how they feel about their country. Many of them, of course, um, As you know, Jamaica is a developing country. We have um, pockets of poverty. We are trying to attain our millennium development goal in that respect. But even in poverty, people have a sense of pride about their country. Jamaicans believe that there is nothing they cannot do. They think they can fly 
and they believe that one day they will be able to fly. And I think it's that indomitable spirit that helps them through hardships. Uh, we are susceptible, as you know, to hurricanes practically every year. And you would find after a hurricane, you know, you, some people have lost their roofs, some are even without a home, but they are smiling. They are walking around, helping each other, and um, you find that this togetherness. I mean, it's not rosy all the time. We have our challenges, as many of you know, but I don't know any country that does not um, have challenges. But what I'm saying, the, the, the exposure of the brand has to begin at home and begin with the people. Stimulate relevant and critical innovations among stakeholders around the strategy and coordinate to tell the same powerful story. It means that all the players revolving around the brand have to be saying the same thing. They have to be on the same page. And of course, that requires collaboration and cooperation. Government and private sector collaboration is particularly important to make the branding effective as both entities complement each other. What the public sector lacks in branding skills, the private sector can provide. And of course, the private sector cannot operate on its own without the legitimacy of government. Another um, point I would like to highlight here is the involvement of the diaspora. Mr. Dumfried, no, I'm very passionate about the diaspora and about the contribution that the diaspora can make to national development. In Jamaica, we have a very structured um, program for involvement of the diaspora. And um, that, uh, the, the coordination of that rests in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. But of course, the ministry coordinates with the private sector, collaborates with other government entities like the, the ministry responsible for Brand Jamaica, the Ministry of Tourism. And so they all get together and ensure that they are saying the same things to the diaspora. We encourage the diaspora to get involved in local investment, and we encourage them also to, to promote Brand Jamaica wherever they are. One of the, the, the fascinating things about sports all over the world is the way it brings people together. And no matter where a sporting event is being held, if a Jamaican is participating, you are bound to see a Jamaican flag there. People will travel miles and miles to go and support Jamaica. And so this is something we are trying to, to instill. Many Jamaicans, for instance, in the US, Canada, and the UK, they hold um, high offices in the government and so on, and of course, using the opportunity to promote brand Jamaica to protect Jamaica's interests. So the diaspora is a very powerful um, tool that countries can use to help to promote uh, their brand. Now, having said this, there are challenges in terms of nation branding. Many of our countries are poor. We do not have enough resources to allocate to promotion. And of course, we have to be very creative. And so, of the, for instance, foreign missions overseas, uh, the Ministry of Tourism, for instance, um, encouraging familiarization tours to the island, uh, trade missions, participating in trade fairs, that also is very um, expensive. So we have to, for small countries and for um, poor countries, every day it's as if we have to be coming up with a new strategy 
to be out there competing because the world is rapidly changing. It's a dynamic environment and we all have to secure our place and to make sure that our country gets the attention that it needs so that it can um, develop and provide for its people. Um, one of the challenges we now face, and as Jamaica, we of course are very strong in certain areas, the creative industries. That's an emerging area for many countries. And I do not think um, developing countries, including Jamaica, have been able to exploit the benefits as much as they should um, from the creative industries. For instance, Jamaica, fashion is a very big item. It's a big industry in Jamaica. But we have not been able to market that internationally. When you look at a country like Australia, and you see movie stars jetting into Australia to um, get their clothes and to, to, to go to the latest designers. So that's where we would like to reach. And we are now working on developing a strategy to hone the creative industries, fashion, film. Many people um, do not know that um, many of the James Bond uh, books were written in Jamaica. Two films were, were um, filmed in Jamaica. And um, Jamaica is an ideal film location, so we have to market that and become more aggressive in our uh, marketing efforts. I don't think we can just sit back and rely on sports and music. We need to, to um, show the world that there is more to Jamaica than reggae, there's more to Jamaica than the beach, and there's so much more. And I'm sure that many of you in your countries, you have high points that you highlight, but like us, you also have challenges in bringing to the fore those areas that you think you may have a competitive, in which you may have a competitive advantage, but because of lack of resources, sometimes too technical constraints prevent you from um, marketing the country the way you would like to. So I don't know if I should stop here to say that um, uh, I, I'm not sure if there's anything that you wanted to hear that I have not touched on. I've tried to be quite brief, giving you in a nutshell our identity as brand um, Jamaica. It has paid off for us. Investments have increased. We now have um, in the tourist, um, to tourism sector, Spanish investment has increased uh, dramatically. We would like to have this replicated in the other areas we spoke about particularly the creative industries, because that is where we really feel that we have a competitive advantage, but have not been able to maximize um, the benefit. If we are not careful, others will um, market Jamaica and benefit from it. And so we have to be careful. We see Blue Mountain coffee um, sometimes in supermarkets, and it's not authentic Blue Mountain coffee. So piracy is another area that one has to pay attention to, to ensure that um, your brand maintains its integrity and that it can be um, sustainable as a positive brand. Thank you. I don't know if.